Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. For as much as these two persons have come hither to be made one, if there is anyone present who can show just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. <laughs> tricks on you. This is a genuine certified rice throwing present giving wedding. And the victims are Zelda Gilroy, whose first words on the day she learned to talk were, Dobie Gillis, will you marry me? And Maynard G. Krebs, for whom they invented the phrase, I wouldn't marry him if he was the last man on earth. Now, how did this unlikely pair find themselves in such an unlikely situation? Well, it all began on Zelda's 22nd birthday. That's 21st birthday, and if you were a gentleman, you'd stop counting. Make a wish, daughter, and you'll find happiness. I know that, and I did. No hard, dear, and it'll come true. I know that, and I will. I know what the wish is, and goodbye. Speed! Yay! Move, 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 move. Dear parents and friends, thank you for this happy day. I hope that you'll all be present on an even happier day, namely, my wedding. Oh! Uh, here, here! Here, here! Bye-bye! On that joyous occasion, I personally guarantee a bigger cake, fancier decorations, and positively no change in personnel. <laughs> Follow me out to the porch. We'll start in on the birthday. Oh. present, Poopsie. It was so thoughtful of you. Uh, you're welcome, Zelda, but it, uh, it was really nothing. True, but thanks anyhow. Uh -huh. Some present. A lifetime membership to a Lonely Hearts Club. Toby, are you trying to tell me that you actually don't want to marry me? Yeah, actually, yes. All right, stubborn. I shall be forced to use desperate measures, namely a brilliant new scheme. Forget it, Zelda. It'll bomb out like all your other brilliant schemes to trap me. Not this one. It's foolproof. There's no such thing as a foolproof plan. There is when the fool in the plan is Maynard. Maynard? Now, my Maynard? Of course. How many fools named Maynard do we know? Uh -huh. Now, hear this. Yeah. I'm going to use him to get you to marry me. Clever, huh? Clever how? Oh, I'm proud of this one. Now, uh -huh. tell me, yeah. what does Maynard love and cherish most in this world? His petrified frog. No, I'm talking about larger concepts. What he loves and cherishes most is his freedom and independence, true? True. And you as his friend would do anything, I repeat, anything, to protect that freedom and independence, true? True. Maynard just wouldn't be Maynard if he lost him. Aha. Uh -huh. But if he got married, he'd lose him, wouldn't he? True. But Maynard get married, nobody'd ever marry Maynard, so he's perfectly... Zelda, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? You couldn't. Couldn't I? You could. You bet I could, and I will. I'll get him to propose to me, and then there'll be only one way to save him. You'll have to marry me instead. Zelda, you're a fiend. Please don't do this terrible thing to... Oh, what am I so worried about? Maynard will never propose to you. Just wait. Oh, I'll admit he may not be the smartest fellow in the world, but that. he does have a kind of basic animal intelligence. Like, hi, Aunt. How was the picnic? How did I know you was on a picnic? No offense, but you got mustard on your whiskers. There. You're all nice and clean. A genuine gentleman aunt. Hmm? A ten-course outdoor shindig tomorrow? Gee, thanks for the invite, aunt. But I'd rather stay home and get mustard on my whiskers. I mean, picnics just ain't what they used to be. People show up. Maybe next time? Keep in touch, money-legged buddy. Even if it's only a postcard. Hi, Maynard. Uh, what are you doing? I was talking to a friendly aunt and go ahead and say it. Say what? What everybody says. Maynard, you can't talk to an aunt. You're a knothead. Why should I say or a thing like that? anybody who understands insects is a nincompoop. Oh, if you say you can Sometimes understand insects, you can animals can't insects. talk. Manager, you, you believe I can talk to an ant? Of course, doesn't everybody? Don't nobody except me. Well, that's ridiculous. Ants or any animals will talk to anyone who's willing to listen, like you. Oh, for joy, for joy, I found a believer. Glorioski in Europa. Uh, Maynard, that ant that just walked away, where was he from? Indiana, that's in Minneapolis. Good country. Especially for family ants with small children. Zeld, all of a sudden you look altogether different to me. Nah, Maynard, it's the same old me. Sweet, kind, lovable, understanding. Same old me I've always been. And you listen to ants. You're a great American like George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, or Peter Lawford. Then I safely assume, Maynard, that you like me. True. And you consider me a friend. True. And you'll marry me. Untrue. Marry you? Zeld, you gone wig. <laughs> Ho, 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 never. Ho, 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 wait. Ho, 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 I want my mother. <laughs> you need a wife to take care of you. 
take care of you. Tie your shoelaces, dial the telephone for you, make change for you so you can get on the streetcar and like that. True? False. I already got somebody like that, namely Dobe, so there, ha ha. True. Dobie did do those things for you. Right. He did? Did. But everything's gonna change now that he's about to leave. Leave? Old Dobe ain't going no place. Where's he going? Wherever his wife wants to live. Nah, Dobe ain't got no wife. Wife, what wife? And Dobie will have no time to watch out for you, what with five or six kids. Kids? What kids? It doesn't happen yet, but any minute now, he'll be a married man. Yeah, Dobe's all the time proposing to chicks, and one of these times, one of them's gonna say yes. Right, and where does that leave you? What's the problem? Wherever Dobe goes, I goes. You think his wife's gonna sit still for that? Wife, what wife? She'll have enough on her hands with all those kids. Kids? What kids? Be all alone, Maynard. All alone and lonely. Me? Lovable, likable Maynard G. Krebs, who everybody loves and likes and waves when they see me? Yeah, you. Lovable, likable Maynard G. Krebs, who everybody loves and likes and waves at when they see you. Yeah, that's the fella. <laughs> they like you and wave at you now because you're kind of a cute character with a beard and sneakers. But well, what's gonna happen when the beard starts to turn gray? Me, old gray beard? And the sneakers start to get old and tattered. Me, old tattered sneakers? Then you'll be nothing but a joke and an old joke at that. Now you're young, you're kind of cute and funny. But when you get old, you'll be pathetic. That could happen to like a beloved manager crabs everybody Enough, likes. Enough, Maynard, and yes. Now they wave at you, then they'll laugh at you. Like, wow is me. You'll be all alone and lonely with no one to care for you. Like, wow is me. How will it look? An old man your age, all alone and lonely, trying to be a cute character. Well, it's enough to make a person cry. And finally, they'll have to come take you away to the old folks' home. You'll be alone and lonely with no one to care what happens to you. Like a lass and a lack, like, wow is me. You want someone to help you, you say? Like, yes, like, yes. You want someone to care for you and comfort you in your old age, you say? Like, please, like, please. Once more. Like, please, like, please. Very well, Maynard. Your plaintive cry for help has touched my heart. I'll marry you. Like, thanks, like... Hey, Zell. Yes, Maynard. Yes, my betrothal. How come all of a sudden I got a funny feeling I've been snookered? Can't <laughs> chatter. Let's get on with the proposal. Now, there's just one thing missing. The ring? The ring. Okay, where is it? Here. Right. Hey, in the movies, they always get down on one knee when they're proposing. Well, uh, that's... that's the custom. Well, just don't stand there, girl. Get with it. <laughs> Maynard G. Krebs, wilt thou marry me? Zelda G. Gilroy... I, I... You wilt, you wilt. I wilt? That's it, you said it, that's it, you proposed. Maynard, we're practically man and wife. Hey, how about that? And I can't even cook. <laughs> Maynard G. Krebs and Zelda Gilroy, man and wife, we were all surprised, except my folks, who had known Maynard and Zelda all their lives. They received the news with appropriate dignity and solemnity. <laughs> Maynard and Zelda, oh. Herbert, stop that. There's nothing to laugh about. Oh, no? Well, just think about it for a few minutes. Maynard and Zelda getting married. <laughs> oh, come now. Maynard and Zelda. <laughs> it is rather funny, isn't it? <laughs> Zelda and Maynard. <laughs> Maynard and Zelda, oh, no. <laughs> Zelda and Maynard. <laughs> Zelda Gilroy grew up in our town. She's admired and respected by one and all. So when the news got around that she was marrying Maynard, the citizens of the community were quick to express their feelings about the bridegroom. <laughs> when the mayor and city council heard the news, they called an emergency meeting. After a brief discussion, they voted a special fund to buy Maynard a suitable wedding present. <laughs> However, the two people whose opinions really counted were, of course, Zelda's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Gilroy. I am happy to report that they took the news in a manner typical of solid, substantial American parenthood. <laughs> Mr. Gilroy, an infantry soldier who fought bravely against the Japanese, was not a man to weep for long. Soon his mood changed. <laughs> Naturally, Mr. Gilroy soon realized that using that ceremonial sword for self-destruction was no answer to the problem. A far more effective idea occurred to him. <laughs> Maynard's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Krebs, sympathetically referred to in the neighborhood as those poor souls. What did they do when they heard the news? Well, I mean no disrespect, but I must in all honesty describe their actions as cowardly. They hopped on the first train to any place and left town in a hurry. Boy, did they leave town in a hurry. But I, the best friend, kept my head. I refused to panic. I knew there was nothing to worry about. You see, 
Maynard has enormous respect for my opinions. My slightest word is his command. When I, his good buddy, advised him not to marry Zelda, what else could he answer but... Get lost. <laughs> my friend Maynard G. Krebs is a fine, decent, honorable fellow. I just wish he'd be a fine and decent and honorable fellow someplace else, preferably on another continent. I mean, with a human being like him for a friend, I'm all for be kind to animals week. But he had problems, and I had to stand behind him, but not far enough behind him. Vamos, Trita, go back to your wife and five kids. Wife? What wife? Where's the living kids? Counting is something I'm too good at. Neither is English, and pay attention. <laughs> Do you mind? Do you mind? <laughs> Maynard, the whole idea of you and Zelda getting married is ridiculous, and I want you to forget about it immediately. But why, Dope? Old Zell says marrying her would be a fine, helpful thing for me. How could marrying her possibly help you? Well, she could take care of me. I mean, she could, like, tie my shoelaces and keep a roof under my head and stop me from becoming a public charge, sleeping on park benches and turning into an old, lonely person, living in an old, lonely person's home. Do you still think I shouldn't marry her? Hmm. Hmm, what though? Hmm, maybe she's got a point. Hmm, maybe I better say I do real quick before she finds somebody better. Hmm, <laughs> you know, no, 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 man. What does a fellow like you need with marriage? What do you mean a fellow like me? What's so different about me? I'm a human person. I'm entitled. I don't know what I'm entitled to, but I'm entitled. Maybe that isn't what I meant. Sure, I think I know what I'm entitled to. All the things you other fellows are entitled to, right? Right. And if I don't get them when I get married, I'll get them after I move in with you, after you get married, right? Right. I mean, did it ever occur to you that sometimes I do an awful lot of talking with very little thinking? Often, Dobe, often. Practically always. Okay, okay. So maybe getting married would be a good thing for you, but not to Zelda. Believe me, Maynard, not to Zelda. Why not? Oh, Zelda ain't so bad. Her heart's in the right place. It's the rest of everything put together too good. Now, listen, Jim, she must like me and want to help me, or else why did she get down on one knee and not sing Mammy? All right, Maynard, you ask for it, and I'm going to tell you. Zelda proposed to you because... Yes, Dobie, go ahead and tell him. You bet I'll tell him. Tell him I don't really want to take care of him. Tell him I don't give a darn for him. Tell him I'm just using him for my own evil purposes. Go ahead, tell him. You bet I'll tell him. Right, tell him and break his heart. You bet I'll... T Zelda, you're a low-down rat. I prefer to think of myself as a woman fighting desperately for her mate. Old Zell really likes me and wants to and thinks of me. Don't she, Dope? Don't she? Yes, Maynard, she does like you. She does want to do all those things for you. Naturally. You see, I'm quite lovable. Come, Maynard, my beloved. We have oodles of shopping to do for our honeymoon. Ah, yes, the future Mrs. Maynard G. Krebs, my bride. Let us away to choose my wedding torso. That's true, so, my sweet, and you say the cutest things. Ta-ta, <laughs> Dobie, and uh, better dust off your good suit. At the wedding, you'll be the best man. There ought to be a law against that, Zelda. There just ought to. <laughs> me over a barrel. Yeah, well, while you're over there, pick up a couple of dozen pickles. You ain't done three yeah, hours on this work around here since so the last listen time. To him and see I'm listening. I'm listening. You see, Dad, if Maynard doesn't back out of the marriage by Sunday, I'll have to step in. So what's wrong with that? Maynard ain't ready for marriage. But I'd have to marry Zelda instead. What's wrong with that? She's a nice kid. But if I married her, we'd have to move in here with you, and you'd have to support us for two or three years. There ought to be a law against that, Zelda. There really ought. Herbert, be sensible. We have to convince Maynard that marriage to Zelda would be a terrible mistake. Right, so I'll have a long talk with him, and when I get through, he'll be convinced that marriage to anybody is a mistake. Herbert. Uh, uh, no, no, Winnie, too. you know what I mean. Yes, of course I do, Dean. Good. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, now, listen, Winnie. <laughs> please, please, no family squibbling. I am soon to be a happy bridegroom, and I look upon marriage as a fine, noble, lovable institution of life, and that's the way it truly is, isn't it, Mr. G? You bet, Maynard. Marriage is the biggest mistake. Herbert, you are much too eager. I will tell you. Oh, killjoy. Nina, dear, you know we wish you all the happiness in the world, but are you sure, dear, that marriage is the right step for you? No, Mrs. G, I ain't sure at all about marriage. But I am sure I don't want to be alone and all lonely the rest of my natural-born days. It ain't right for me. I mean, being like that is all sad and wrong and, and not fit for a human person. Even me. And getting married is much better than that, ain't it, Mrs. G? Hmm. Go ahead, Mom, tell him. Go ahead, Winnie, tell him. On the other hand, Maynard, marriage is a terrific adjustment. Two people have to get to know one another, and it's very difficult. And I'm a fellow who's just about the most difficult is. I mean, look at these clothes, and I collect tinfoil and play bongos and watch them paint the white line down the middle of the street. So I guess you could say getting used to me is about the hardest thing a wife could do, huh, Mrs. G? Yes, Maynard, I guess you could say that. So you see, dear... But, on the other hand, if I found a great chick who was willing to put up with me, I ought to grab her and marry her quick. Because I might not ever find another chick like that in my whole entire life. Right, Mrs. G? Hmm. 
Go ahead, Mom. Tell him. Go ahead, Winnie. Tell him. Herbert, he's making far too much sense for me. You take over. No, no. He got ahead of me five minutes ago, and I just was there. Likewise, and ten minutes ago. So you ain't gonna try to talk me out of this on account of you're delighted I'm gonna marry old Zeld, huh? No comment. No comment. No nothing, and, uh, good luck, Maynard. Well, Zelda had me convinced that she really meant business. She bought her wedding gown and tickets for the honeymoon trip. She reserved the justice of the peace and talked her girlfriends into throwing a bridal shower. A bridal shower for me? Okay, I'm ready for my presents. No, Maynard. A bridal shower is when they give presents to the bride, not to the groom. Now they tell me. As long as you're here, Maynard, you may as well stay, if you promise to behave. Oh, I'll behave real good. Oh, Laura, it's beautiful. You shouldn't have done it. True, she shouldn't have. True. What she should have is not given us something so cheap. I mean, her whole man's loaded. <laughs> uh, next present. Oh, Helen, these are just lovely. Gee, I saw them in a store downtown. They cost a fortune. Yeah, the real ones do. This is just a cheap imitation. Two ninety eight at the discount store. <laughs> next present. Zelda, dear, all of us girls put our money together to buy this gift. Gee, thanks, Elsa. Actually, it's for you, Maynard. It's a gift we're hoping you will use. A one-way ticket to Tahiti? For one? <laughs> like, wow. And, Sal, you were afraid your friends didn't like me. Hi, Dobie. Hi, Dobie. Hi, Dobie. I just came by to pick up Maynard. Well, Maynard's really enjoying Zelda, the bridal Zelda, show. how can you do this to Maynard, that sweet, simple, unsuspecting schnook? Watch your language. You're speaking of the sweet, simple, unsuspecting schnook I love. Please, Zelda, let him off the hook. Don't come crying to me. His fate is in your hands. You want to keep him free? Do something. And you know what that something is. No, Zelda, I won't be blackmailed. And I won't quit. Let's face it, Toby, it's a fight to the finish. And that's what I was, finished. Because finally the wedding day arrived. The families and friends waiting optimistically for the ceremony to start because, as Zelda's father pointed out, there was still a ray of hope. There might be an earthquake. <laughs> Fortunately, no earthquake came along and we had to go ahead with the wedding. The ceremony started off calmly enough. Zelda, like all brides, was beautiful. And Maynard, I'm sorry to say, was happy and eager. And as so often happens, wrong prevailed over right, and the ceremony began. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. For as much as these two persons have come hither to be made one, if there is anyone present who knows any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined in marriage, let them speak now or forever hold his peace. Uh, sir, uh, I'm the anyone present who knows a just cause why they shouldn't, so for heaven's sakes, don't let them. This is, shall we say, most unusual. Shall we say most cockeyed? Zelda doesn't want to marry Maynard. Maynard doesn't want to marry Zelda. Zelda wants to marry me. Ooh, it's just like the Late Late Show. The last time I saw this, Ginger Rogers couldn't make up her mind between Randolph Scott or um, Fred Astaire, but he danced his way into her heart. <laughs> uh, Zelda, what Dobie said, is it true you want to marry him? Yes, sir. Dobie's turned me down 137 times, and Maynard is sweet and kind and gentle, and he desperately needs someone to take care of him. I'll buy that. So please, sir, go right ahead and marry us. It's the best thing, alas, for everyone. I'll try. If there be anyone present who knows any just cause why these persons may not be joined in marriage, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Yes, sir. Me, sir. You, the bride? Right. I've got to speak now or forever hold myself to be a cad and a bounder. All right, Zelda, speak up. But please be quick about it. I'm not as young as I used to be, and what's going on here isn't helping. Yes, sir. Maynard, dear, what Dobie says is true. I tricked you into proposing to me, and tricking you is so easy, it's unsporting and un-American. So if you want to change your mind and back out of this whole mess, I'll understand. Well, Maynard? Oh, no, your justice of the peace ship. I don't want to back out. Zeld, I ain't mad at you for snookering me into proposing to you. I mean, people are snookering me eight, ten days a week. And besides, you're right. I need help, or I'll end up with holes in my sneakers and a head to match. I'm much obliged for your kindly offer, but I don't see no reason to back out. No! no. Thank you, thank you for your friendly 100% unwarranted support. Please resume, sir, from the top. 
One does one's best. <laughs> if there be anyone present who can show just cause why these two may not be joined in marriage, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Like me, sir, like me. Figures. Okay, fire away, Maynard. The afternoon is shot anyhow. <laughs> Just watch. <clears throat> Friends, relatives, cousins, and guests, due to circumstances above and beyond the call of duty, I just decided I don't want to become matrimonial with Zelda. Hey! Thank you, sports fan. Small girl, it's not that I wouldn't be proud and honored to be your lawful wedded spouse. That's spouse, but keep going. <laughs> Best news I've heard all day. I know, it's better. <clears throat> you see, small girl, all the time you'd be wishing I was somebody else, namely Dobe. So, sayonara in our reservoir. I mean, if you want to leave me waiting at the altar, I'll take it like the brave little man, needless to say, I am. Thank you, Maynard, dear, for your sweet, self-sacrificing offer. But no, I don't want to leave you at the altar. I want to marry you. Oh. I need a poor, helpless schnook to take care of. That's why I want a doby. And when it comes to poor, helpless schnooks, well, Maynard, you're the undisputed champion. Yeah, I gotta give you that. So if you'll forgive all the interruptions, sir, I'd like to continue with the ceremony. Oh. All right. I'll give it one more try. <laughs> if there be any person here who knows any just cause why these two may not be joined in holy matrimony, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. No one wishes to stop the ceremony? You're all sure? Positive? Absolutely positive? <laughs> Very well. Going, going, gone. I shall now proceed to stop it myself. This wedding is ridiculous, and I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot marriage license. I'm sorry, Zelda, and forgive me, Maynard, but I have never never seen two people who had juster cause for not being joined together. So, let's forget the ceremony and get to the refreshments. Hey! Uh, hey, Dope, how about that? I just been wilted. Man, that's jilted, and it couldn't happen to a more deserving fella. True, everybody says they hope I get exactly what I deserve. Oh, my poor baby. What a tragedy. Oh, please, Mother, trying to cheer me up isn't gonna help. This is the saddest day of my life. I gotta be brave and face this terrible disaster. I'm not losing a bride, I'm gaining a wedding cake. <laughs> Zelda Gilroy and Maynard G. Krebs had the most wonderful of all possible endings. They lived happily ever after because they never got married. <laughs> However, the entire experience convinced Maynard that maybe he never would be ready for marriage, and the thought gave him considerable concern. Oh, for joy, for joy, I ain't never gonna get mixed up in that holy deadlock. Maynard, that is wedlock, and come to think of it, stick with deadlock. Maynard, that's no way to talk. You'll discourage the boy from ever getting married. Yeah, I feel it's my duty. Pay no attention to him, dear. Marriage is the finest experience that can happen to a person. Gee, I don't know, Mrs. G. If I got married, I'd be all hemmed and hawed in, and I couldn't do anything I'm accustomed to. Nonsense! Marriage isn't a prison. Why, an understanding wife will be happy to let you do everything that you do now. Like everything? Like everything. Hey, you mean I could play my bongos all day and all night and fill up the closets with my petrified frogs and stuffed owls and pollywogs and click tinfoil in the bathtub and, and ice skate in the kitchen and build snowmen and sandcastles in the living room? On second thought, Maynard, there is much to be said for remaining single. The single person has more freedom, more independence, less financial responsibility, less nagging, less necessity to be proven always right, and may watch for romance coming around the corner, and this is very desirable. Yes, there is much to be said for remaining single. 